Alright guys, welcome to uh, part 3 of the uh, brushless CNC conversion. So, I've finally done printing on my boxes. I, mean, I want to have an integrated power supply box, uh, brushless controller, MOSFETs, and there's going to be a couple of unique things about this design that um, I'm going to be able to control um, my coolant via 110 MOSFET. But I'll show you that. So I've already created all the spots for it. So I'm going to have a power out, I'm going to have power in, 110 in, which then feeds a power supply. Um, I'll go through it, then I'll have a power switch here. Um, but I'll get it all in place and you'll see what I'm doing here. But I'm going to be able to control my, uh, my aquarium air pump via gerbil. Via the, uh, I think it's the A3 pin, I can't remember if it's A3 or A5. But um, I'm going to be able to control the actual on and off of my uh, aquarium pump. So if I'm not here and the, and the, the CNC project gets finished, I can just, it will turn off the uh, coolant pump. I got my 110 outlet in. It just stabs right into place like that. And get the main power switch on. And that's the main power input right there. So if you're wondering, I got this stuff out of an old computer power supply, the switch and the uh, input. So now I gotta figure out how to solder it in there. Um, and then I also have this MOSFET. So this is basically a 5 volt triggered MOSFET that's going to allow me to turn this uh, main power for the coolant on and off. So it's a, it's a two port setup, so I'm only going to use one port. So I'm probably just going to zip tie the wires up. Uh, so it's actually pretty cool. It's a, it's a dual trigger, dual uh, thing. I'll put a link down below where you can get it. But, um, but yeah, it's designed to be controlled by a 5 volt DC trigger and allow uh, 110 out. So it's going to control this socket right here. Main input, on and off, coolant pump. Alright, so I got some, did a little progress here. Probably have to come back tomorrow and keep on filming. It's getting kind of dark, but... So I have my 110 input. Uh, I, I try to keep it uh, the same as like household wiring. So white is neutral, black is hot, and green is ground. So my hot goes to my switch. Which then also feeds... Um, this uh, relay right here, which is going to be controlled from the uh, coolant pin. And then the white is just straight into the actual here, the neutral. Like I said, this is going to feed the power supply, the main power supply here, with power, 110 power. And then uh, this will be triggered by the uh, dribble board. So, uh, yeah, I've already plugged it in. Um, so, yeah, this, this won't actually be hot unless this is on right here. So now I've actually activated power. So the red wire, which is kind of confusing, because you know usually red is for DC. Um, that's coming back and feeding the actual hot here. So that's neutral, that's hot, that's ground, obviously. So everything, the polarity is correct on all the pins. And uh, I guess I can give this a shot real fast. All right, let me I'll hook it up to my instead of actually hooking it up to my dribble board, I'll just hook it up to my power supply here. Do a five volt test, see if the thing actually works. All right, so I'm sending five volts for my power here. Right now I don't have any connected to the, don't have my bubbler connected yet. Um, so, you know, with, with the coil, it's not usually polarity specific. Um, and this actually is a specific one is for five volts, DC or AC. And you don't want to send it more than that because you could burn out the coil. A coil is just basically, it's electromagnetic short. And actually that's what activates the actual uh, relay here. So if you can hear that much. Hope you can hear that. It's active, not active, active. All right. So now I gotta hook up some uh, 110 power to this, and I'll hook up my bubber to it. All right, I have my multimeter on, and let's activate this with the five volt DC power supply here. So you hear it pop, and all right, there we go, 118. All right, so I'm going to um, hook up my uh, bubbler. We'll see what happens. All right, let's give this a shot. So my 5-volt DC trigger, which is going to be the durable coolant pin. All right, success. All right, pretty cool. So now I can move on to the next phase. Um, so I gotta get the uh, buck converter, which is gonna convert the uh, 48 volt signal and step it down to 12 volt to power the actual main, the dribble board, the main board. 
wherever it's at in here somewhere. And then I also need to wire in this into my pin and we'll do a gerbil test of the uh, controlling the actual coolant and make sure all this stuff works and then put it back so together. Now I need to figure out how to power the uh, stepper motor, brushless controller here. And that actually runs off 40, 48 volts coming back from the power supply. So I'm going to feed this up and then I'm going to daisy chain this over to my buck converter. And the buck converter is going to set this down from 48 volt to 12 volt. The cool thing is it's adjustable so I can go from like, so if I ever want to switch out my board to like a 24 volt board, I can actually adjust it. So it's, it's, it's a variable. I, I can adjust the output, the voltage output. So I'm going to run some wires to here to there, so in, and then I'm going to cut, um, cut a length of wire. I'm going to just salvage an old AC adapter to power the board so I can plug it in like that. Like that. But you have to make sure the wires are thick enough to you're going to need at least, I'm guessing probably 3 amp maybe. Uh, plus because I have the driver current turned up too to give it more holding torque. So you want to make sure you use wires that are thick enough to, you know, at least for a few amps to drive the uh, NEMA 17 motors. Alright, so before I saw this down, i got to make sure i got to verify the polarity. Um, so there is a white stripe. And that's usually positive, but it's different. So on the center pin, that's actually the positive. On the outside, the outer shield is the uh, negative. So I'm going to use my probe here. I'm going to find out what is what. And I can do that with a... Uh, is that wrong? It's weird. Got some interference. But, um, okay, so this, I'm actually, I guess it's different. So the, the, stri the side with the... Uh, the white stripe side, or like the side with the lettering, is actually the, the ground side. Alright, so I gotta verify. Alright, so I'm done with this side of the wiring, so let me show you what I did here. So, um, I have two sets of wires here. I have the 48 volt coming from the power supply, which then feeds the controller board, and then comes off and feeds the buck converter. The buck converter comes off here, and that's gonna feed into the actual main board. The 5 volt trigger for the coolant pump, this MOSFET, which uh, activates the uh, 110 for the pump here, is triggered here. And it's going to go to the main board right there. Coolant trigger. And uh, this is the 110 mains going into the... So this was going into the power supply, the 110. And that's actually coming back out as 48 volts to fire this stuff up. Control the actual spindle and everything. Hi guys, sorry for the background noise. They're doing some work outside. Water disc or something. So I'm going to hook up the mains. We're going to do a test run here on the power supply. We have a full like mock-up of this thing. Uh, so you have your ground, your neutral, and your line. Your line is your hot. And then you have your 48 volt, you know, plus minus. It looks like you have an adjustment knob here too, so I, I can probably adjust the output. All right, um, so I'm not going to hook up my uh, 48 volt line in until I know exactly what this thing's outputting. I don't want to fry this uh, brushless motor here in case there's something wrong with this. Uh, yeah, because I, this thing's been unfired. I have no clue what's going to happen here. Hope I don't see sparks. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs> don't want this thing to blow up my face. Never know. All right, so it looks like we're getting some light. Um, got my multimeter here. Let's see what we're getting here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. So I'm going to do a probe here. Oh, actually, negatives here. Look at that one. That's great. I should go back like here and here. So, all right, I'm gonna have to do some more tests here, but that's first shot. That's not looking good. This has to be 48 volt to power that thing. Well, it says 24 volt to 50 volt, but all right, well, that explains why I'm only gonna have voltage right there. There we go. All right, round two. All right, get the multimeter back out again. All right, that's more like it, 47.4. All right. All right, so now I'm gonna hook up my uh, 48 volt lines and we're gonna start keep going up further and further and further. All right, well, before I even get to that, actually, I'm gonna try to figure out what this trimmer pod does right here. I'm guessing it's a voltage regulator. I think it says VR right there. 
So I'm going to do a quick turn of it. Okay, yeah, so it is a, it is a voltage regulator. But I thought, I'm going to make this up more to 48 volt. So I'm going to adjust this as I, as I get everything hooked up. I want to keep, I want to adjust this so it stays at 48 volt once I get everything plugged in and hooked up. I got the 48 volt lines are connected now. Let's see what happens here. All right, cool. We got green. I'm flashing red. I'm assuming it probably doesn't like the fact that none of the wires are connected here. I like the on and off switch. Um, it's no LED on the um, on the buck converter. So one of the things I don't, I don't have this connector right now because I don't want to. I don't want voltage this thing is sitting on. I don't want to fry the uh, MKS DLC board. So I'm going to use my multimeter with that. Put a probe in there like that. Put this to DC mode. And 17.5. That's why I didn't connect it right away. Okay, so I need to adjust the trimmer. I'm guessing that's this. I need to get a small screwdriver over here. This little trimmer pot right here. So when I say trimmer pot, it's a pen. pen I can't even say that. Potentiometer. And, uh, well, it's just a variable resistor. It's basically a voltage divider. Uh, it's, an, it's an adjustable voltage divider. Okay. I'm guessing I'm going to go left and see what happens. Let's go left again. So I need to bring this down to 12 volt. Okay, so left is actually the uh, bringing it down. So I'm going to do two more turns and see what happens. 15. Okay, so it seems like about each turn brings it down to about a volt or so. Let's do three, or let's just do four. Okay, 12.89. So I want to make it about 12.3, somewhere in there. Okay. Okay, well, that's fine right now. I can always mess with it later. Pretty cool, huh? So that's going to feed the MKS board. So, okay, we got power. The This thing's being fed. Um, the, this is adjusted, so I'm going to hook up the DLL, or turn that off. I'm going to hook this up. I'm going to hook up my uh, trigger pin to my my uh, uh, coolant enable pin on my D MKS board here. I'll get rid of these resistors. That was my mulch divider for the uh, spindle. And power this up. And we'll do a... Uh, I'm going to hook in my... Things are getting a mess. I'm going to hook up my coolant pump here to my output here. Like that, and see if I can control from software. All right, so before I do a coolant test, uh, if you guys are wondering, I'm running a Trinamic 22A drivers. I'm going to be doing them a manual control, so I'm controlling the current. I'm going to step up the current because the 3D printer you want less current. With a CNC machine, you want more more current to be able to control the torque or the holding force of the uh, of the uh, motors. So this is actually my top that I designed, and uh, it runs a 40 millimeter fan. And it goes like that, and this little, this is the outlet, but it cools, it goes right on top of those drivers, right here. So, all right, let's do a quick test, let's see what happens. All right, so this is going to be the end of this video, but I'm going to show you, I'll do a coolant test. Well, this will be end of part three. I don't like to make these videos too long, but, uh, okay, so, quick recap. 110 comes in, goes out here, feeds the uh, relay back to here power supply, 48 volt comes back up, feeds the uh, brushless, com or brushless uh, controller, then feeds the, the buck converter, buck converter comes up, feeds the actual MKS box, and this white thing is the, actually the uh, 5 volt output signal for the uh, coolant, which then goes back down, feeds and triggers the actual uh, relay here, which then triggers the 110, and goes to the actual uh, uh, aquarium pump here. Alright, so I'm going to use open builds. And I'm going to cool it on, okay? Ready? Okay. Alright, cool it off. Yeah, I'm not sure why it disabled. 
yeah, that was weird. It kind of like when I when I shut off the coolant pump, it disabled the uh, the communication here with uh, Arduino. Let me try that again. Pop on. That's weird. So I don't know if it was vibration or what it was, but yeah. So when I when I disabled the pump, it, it disabled communication on my USB cable coming up here. So. Don't know. I mean, that shouldn't be an issue. I've I've used this A3 pin for other things, like my uh, like my laser cutter right there. I did I designed that that coolant uh, thing in the front right there. The uh, air assist. All right. All right. So that's the end of this video. Uh, making some progress. Um, what I need to do now is uh, design a box for my uh, my spindle control. So what I want to do is I want to have manual and uh, software driven control. So I want to be able to actually have a button where I can switch to manual spindle control and also control obviously via gerbil because 99% of the time I'm going to be controlling it via gerbil, uh, the software. But in case I get to turn the thing off to change it a bit, I want to be able to turn the spindle off or even just manually adjust it for some reason I want to do. I could disable it from gerbil and manually control it. So, all right, so that's my next thing. I got to design some more boxes and I can start mounting this stuff to the uh, the 3018 CNC back of it. So awesome! I'll try that one more time. Ah, cool.